we created a medicine in the 1900s, and the, especially with the, the deep digging in the late 1900s, that in the, 20, in the 21st century here, we realize that only has limited application because it doesn't look at it as a web. And all traditional medicines did look at it as a web. And that's why so many of us went back to that philosophy. And then those of us in functional medicine came forward and said, how do you marry that? So that you have that underlying awareness of how things are hooked together. And then you bring into that the elegance of discoveries of 21st century medicine. In conventional medicine, the issue is get everything off the table and get to a diagnosis and then you figure out what drug best, to, best applies to that particular diagnosis. If you say instead, what are all the vectors in this person's life that have summated in this diagnosis? It's a totally different way of looking and critically sorting their information. And it requires a kind of therapeutic partnership that isn't what you see in conventional medicine because in conventional medicine the job is stop the patient from talking if they're not talking about how I get to a diagnosis. And our way of doing it is keep the patient talking to get everything on the table so that you could then have those vectors that tell you with their help why did you end up with this diagnosis? Because it's not what is the disease, it's what kind of patient has that disease. If we truly had the nutrients that we needed and we had them every day, the immune system would be able to fight those, those cancer cells. And what gives one person cancer and another person not cancer? A lot of it's their immune system. And it's, it's their immune system fighting those cancer cells that are growing every day. Every day of our lives, cancer cells grow and our immune systems fight it. I'd like to see the future of functional medicine be part of every doctor's practice. And how can you argue against eating right, eating close to nature, getting rid of toxins. I mean, when, when there are doctors that aren't paying attention to the effects of the toxins in our environment on our health, that's a sin. And there are organizations around that are teaching this. Uh, functional IFM is teaching it. And I would really, really like the physicians and the public to be as aware as possible of the effects of toxins. And we can really assess our environmental toxin exposure. We can measure it in blood and urine and see what our toxin exposure is, which we're all exposed to. Uh, but if you do couple that with the genetic testing, you can see how much more important it is for that person to, to focus on a certain you know, the phase one genetic uh, detox pathway or phase two detox pathway or com combination or see if they have high levels of volatile solvents, is it because they have this trouble getting rid of it genetically? So I think uh, the genetic testing is an exciting area for us to get into. If you can pick it, peel it, fish it, hunt it, milk it, grow it, then for the most part you can eat it. I'd love to see a world where we have taken responsibility for our health again. Because 100 years ago, antibiotics were invented, and all of a sudden the doctors became gods. And they said, wow, you can save my life with this antibiotic. I I'm going to let you make all the decisions. I'm going to let you do everything. I'm going to stand back here and not make any choices for myself. And now 100 years later, we're still doing that. We're giving up our responsibility to someone else. But what, what we all need to do, and one at a time, is take back responsibility for our life, take back responsibility for our health, take back responsibility for our choices. I I've been involved in functional and integrative medicine for probably over 20 years. I think it began because as a psychiatrist I actually learned to listen to patients and they would tell me their story and it became very clear how lifestyle and diet had influenced their health and well-being. And it wasn't a lack of Prozac or Zoloft or any of the other medications, it really was what they were eating, how they were living. Head to toe, it's a head to toe approach. So, mental, spiritual atmosphere is first, then, environmental, looking at the environmental stressors and um, issues of significance within the environment that could relate to your health. So, getting a balanced environment, uh, grip on mental and spiritual health, as well as nutrition, digestion, detoxification, hormonal balance, encompassing the entire hypothalamic, pituitary, adrenal, gonadal axis, and then structure and function, so movement, exercise those seven key principles to really kind of balance the wheel. Real take homes from this conference is the importance of diet in not only preventing cancer but in helping you once you have cancer 
So you don't don't give up. It's don't don't give up. Oh, you have cancer. You have to just you know eat whatever you want. That's when you really have to pay attention to your diet. Uh, and that very same diet is going to protect you from heart disease, protect you from cognitive decline, diabetes, everything. So the bottom line is eat as close to nature as possible, and you will maintain your health. No white, no wheat, no sweet. Very little red meat, and kind of put the that kind of image on your plate, you've got a good balance. The diet rich in fruits and vegetables lowers the risk for most types of cancer and indeed heart disease. We never could explain why. Well, there's some gifted speakers here with excellent credentials who are explaining what are these subnutrients, these minor dietary constituents, these um, <clears throat> phytochemicals that are in food, how do they affect genetic expression, epigenetics? So there's this wonderful explanation, the pharmacokinetics. We've known this actually for centuries, that if you eat a good diet, you're going to be healthier. Now we're able to explain why. Fast-paced, high stress, um, lack of faith, uh, loss of perceived control, lack of responsibility, all those things come into play. So if you empower the patient and say, you have control over this, you have control over your life, 25% genetic, 75% environment, you can tilt the scales into your favor, that that helps them, empower them, and fight away all those media influences, societal influences that could be um, defeating them.